This news comes from Kotaku. Uh, their headline reads, Breath of the Wild is getting a sequel because the team had too many DLC ideas. And other info from Zelda producer, written by Jason Scry- Schreier. Oh, Jason thanks, Schreier, Jason. yes. Yes, that's that's it. So, uh, skipping their little intro here, uh, going straight to the interview because it's kind of a long one. Uh, Alanuma says... Uh, the original game was released 26 years ago on the Game Boy. This is talking about Link's Awakening. Getting that Game Boy version is a little hard to do these days, so I've wanted to remake this game for a while. When I create a remake or reimagination, I don't want to just make it completely the same. I always want to incorporate new elements. For even people who have played the original, I want it to be a fresh experience. So I was looking for that opportunity. There was also a discussion separately of an idea of incorporating something where users can arrange something in, on their own in the game. In Zelda, I was thinking what that could be. We landed on the idea of dungeons. When we were thinking about arranging dungeons, uh, quick uh, segue here for those who don't know, the original Zelda game, uh, I don't know if they mention it here or not, but the original Zelda game on the Famicom Disk System was also meant to have its own little dungeon designer, but Miyamoto thought that it would be too complicated for the casual fans to understand and it would deter them from playing the game. They would think, oh, well, that game's too hard. I can't make my own dungeons. What's the point of playing it? And then completely skip out on the actual main game. So they, even though it was finished and completed, they decided to not release it. And it seems like they're finally getting back to that idea here, which a lot of people were wishing for a Zelda dungeon designer whenever Mario Maker released. So looks like they're finally yeah. getting it. So, uh, going on, uh, we landed on the idea of dungeons. When we were thinking about arranging dungeons, creating a puzzle on their own is always a little bit hard, so we thought, what's an easy way to have players be able to arrange things? We thought maybe a room arrangement or a map arrangement would be an easy way. And it'd feel like solving a puzzle. That's how we landed on the dungeon editor, Chamber Dungeons. Once we landed on the idea of arranging dungeons, we were thinking in Link's Awakening, pretty much every room is about the same size. So we thought this would be the perfect fit for incorporating the Chamber Dungeon. And that's how the reimagining came about. It also reminds me, if anyone has played Skyward Sword, uh, Skykeep Dungeon, is that the name of it? You had to rearrange its yeah, different Skykeep. rooms as well. So it's very much a 2D version of that dungeon like mm, yes and no but i think this is a lot more customizable where skykeep was rearranging was the puzzle of the dungeon it was just moving the rooms around but yeah this is going to be a bit more of a a user end sort of based experience yeah. not quite as in-depth as mario maker but that game's just <laughs> <laughs> it's just brilliant but yeah and uh but go on moving down to breath of the wild 2 on the lack of button remapping in Brill, I get... Where's it at? It was just here. Oh well. Uh, anyways, when we have a button arrangement, we very much put thought into how we do it because there's a specific way we want players to feel in some ways. If we freely let players do customizations on key assignments and such, I feel like we're letting go of our responsibility as a developer by just kind of handing everything over to the users. We have something in mind for everybody when we play the game. So that's what we hope players experience and enjoy as well, but we understand also that players have a desire for free customization. Schreier asks, or says, also physically disabled players might not be able to play the way developers intended. Alnuma responds, definitely that's a very good point, and that's something we'll keep in mind going forward thinking about it. On innovation in Zelda, Schreier asks, when we talked in 2014, you told me you wanted to reconstruct the idea of puzzles entirely. What do you want your next big innovation to be? Alnuma laughs, I can't tell you. Sad. Sad. <laughs> we we want to know all the Zelda stuff. Uh, Schreier Never. says, I mean, from a big picture perspective, similar to the idea of reconstructing Zelda puzzles, or puzzles in a Zelda game, that's a good challenge. What's the next big I or what's the next big challenge for you? One thing we learned from Breath of the Wild is that when we focused on creating a dungeon, dungeon that has multiple solutions, it turned into this great title. That's one thing I want to polish up and use for inspiration going forward. I thought Breath of the Wild was a masterpiece. A lot of people did. But is there anything you wish you could have done better? I can't really speak to that specifically. I might use the ideas I have for a next Zelda or whatever Zelda series I might be working on in the future. 
Uh, it goes on to talk about work conditions, and then on the Breath of the Wild sequel. Uh, what made you and the team decide to make a sequel to Breath of the Wild as opposed to a new Zelda game? Alan Numa replied, When we released the DLC for Breath of the Wild, we realized that this is a great way to add more elements to the same world. But when it comes to... But when it comes down to a technical... I cannot talk, words are hard. But when it comes down to technical things, DLC is pretty much data. You're adding data to a pre-existing title. So when we wanted to add bigger changes, DLC is not enough. And that's why we thought maybe a sequel would be a good fit. Schreier asks, was this sequel originally planned as DLC? Alanuma replies, initially we were thinking of just DLC ideas, but then we had a lot of ideas and we said, this is too many ideas, let's just make our, let's just make one new game and start from scratch. Which technically, they're not starting from scratch since they're using the same Link and Zelda models in the same main overworld, but I get what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. I just imagine him at a desk, like they, they have this meeting and they're presenting all their ideas, and Alnuma just sitting there, like, this is too many ideas, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, Literally, this his many. words in the meeting too, too many yeah. ideas. <laughs> this is too many ideas. Yeah. Uh, we also yeah. learned uh, Alnuma may be moving away from the Zelda series. Uh, sort of like what Miyamoto did, because he got a promotion, which mm-hmm. might mean uh, Fujibayashi. The director of Breath of the Wild Ooh, might you be said the that new... name was way better than I could have. Fujibayashi. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I it's it's probably the only Japanese name that I'm good at, or can s- pronounce without um, stuttering. So, but yeah, uh, Josh, since you are our guest, what are what are your thoughts on this? Are you more intrigued by a Breath of the Wild two, or would you have rather seen something completely different, like going from Wind Waker to Twilight Princess to Skyward Sword, or are you more of uh, like Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask, uh, Wind Waker to Phantom Hourglass, Breath of the Wild to Breath of the Wild two? Am I allowed to say I've never played Majora's Mask on this show? Uh, that's no, fine. You're not allowed to. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not your fault. Uh, you you just you could never find the expansion pack. It wasn't your no, fault. You you I had to g- have one sitting right <laughs> next to me. Oh, right I was trying to I was trying to save you. I'm trying to give you an no, out I from have, the fans. I have a couple of those in my collection right now. So, uh, I even have Majora's Mask on my 3DS. I just have never I never played it. So, um look like i'm i'm all about it i don't i don't i don't have i don't care if it's a new if it's a if it's a new game like i loved super mario galaxy and i love super mario galaxy 2 and i felt like 2 was probably the better game because they could take Hmm. what they they could take what they maybe wanted to fix and then they fixed it right and um you guys know i think because i i oh i don't know if it was i can't remember who i was talking to i right as they uh, it was the guys from Game Explain in the media room. Mm-hmm. I was like, as soon as I as this that thing was done, you know, there's massive buzz, right? And I was like, this Zelda game has this the sequel has dungeons. Like that was a dungeon. It has to be a dungeon, right? And mm-hmm. so that's the only thing I felt like. Uh, I I love Breath of the Wild. I couldn't put that game down. Like I couldn't stop playing it. I played mm-hmm. that game uh, continually. Uh, like 122 hours or something right and then you remember when that when they that dlc came out and you could see where you'd gone on the map and it was like i've never been there you know like that was yeah that was great yeah that, that was, was crazy great. <laughs> so i mean i'm i'm all about uh them getting i mean the other question i've had honestly is like what is nintendo gonna do in year four because mm-hmm. we had zelda and mario right we had mario kart which is a is a port technically breath of the wild is a port so you know so th- this is going to be the first switch zelda title and i mean you know mm-hmm. like and so let's 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 see where it goes i hope the bosses are a little more interesting right which it kind yeah. of already kind of lends itself to that just looking at the the that creature coming a lot you know coming back to life and and so uh I, I didn't like. I didn't like necessarily love the divine beasts and whatnot. I kind of thought they were a little lackluster for what I would hope for in a in a in a Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, just the like, if they can expand on that on that world, that that overworld, give us new places to explore and new like 
Do you remember the first time you saw the dragon flying around in Breath of the oh Wild and the shadow yeah. and everything? Like, that was unreal. It was just like, what is this? You know, and how do I kill that thing? And what, you know, like, I, I, I loved that aspect, all those different aspects. And so um, if they can take what made Breath of the Wild so magical and then mm -hmm. add to it just a little more of like an original Zelda formula, mm -hmm. sign me up all day. Like, I'm, I'm down. And if that means we get it sooner than later, then by all means. I agree. <laughs> I think that's the, the magical thing about video game sequels is that they can they can really do that. They can take a foundation and they can pick apart the things that aren't maybe you need refining or things, you know, and just really build on what they've on the foundation that they've laid already. Um, and with you know other forms of medium you just don't have that same sort of opportunity to make something the same but newer and better and different it's um, essentially the know, george it's, lucas it's, effect but it doesn't get screwed up yeah, right yeah, yeah. that's it's that's what <laughs> yeah, it is it's like the, it's like they get to george lucas their game but they actually get to make it good versus like you know yeah. the special edition star wars <laughs> that's a that's a good way to put it <laughs> um, without any weird extra dance numbers or um so we got a super <laughs> chat here excel <laughs> Actually, you could give me a dance number in Breath of the Wild, but um, Excel Super Chats, one dollar. Hey, man, if you got a question or anything, uh, throw it in the chat there, Excel. Thank you for the for the Super Chat there. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to uh, see. I think I think that's the thing is with with Breath of the Wild, the, the game was built entirely with the mindset of taking feedback from Skyward Sword and applying that and them saying like, OK, you know, these are these are things we've gone to. We've gone too linear in our focus on Zelda game design. We've gotten too heavy into tradition and what our you know, conventions are. So how can we shake things up? How can we change it? So then Breath of the Wild came out of that. And I think this is going to be the same thing where people, people they had such great reactions, but like, this game was great, but we missed this. And I think that's what we're going to see with this new title. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. I'm hoping that that big shot of a, like a, like a, looked like a dungeon entrance you know that there was one shot in there it looked like a big doorway so we'll see we'll have to wait and see though i'm yeah, not gonna it, say anything's for sure <laughs> it, it definitely it, it did look like a dungeon and uh w one of the things i'm hoping for is kind of like when you start breath of the wild um when you go to the first uh pedestal and the first sheikah tower rises up Sheikah towers from all over start to rise up, and then they do the same thing in the DLC that all of the new shrines like start to rise up out of the ground as if from nowhere. And I'm hoping that they just redo the same thing again in Breath of the Wild 2 to where you go and you do oh. something, and like maybe when the castle rises up out of the ground, yeah, that all of the old temples from like the earth temple or the fire temple the water temple they all just start to rise up as well so it's like even no, just they an were, entrance yeah it's it like they were there the whole, we see the whole castle go up like who knows what else could yeah and they just yeah. rise out of the ground the same way they did in uh don't, don't uh, mess with my emotions yeah, jesse the first one. Don't, and then, don't mess with my emotions <laughs> and then something else uh, that i thought like would be awesome for them to do in the the second dlc to give us more uh, temples or whatever, if they were going to go in that direction, like the the easiest way that I seen they could have done that is, everyone was hoping to play in the past in Breath of the Wild with the DLC because you get all the memories and then you could see all of the villages the way that they are in the cutscenes, like Hyrule Castle Town. It's you know there's all the the different buildings and stuff in it that they created for a cutscene that we never get to see or play or run through, but they still exist. We just can't access them, which is sad. Yeah. But in yeah, that I think they were meant to at one point, but yeah, maybe then the story changed. But in that same way, I was thinking like an easy way thing they could do because they have the trial of the sword to where you literally just put the sword in the pedestal and all of a sudden, like you get taken to the, the trials or whatever. And there's the temple of time. And Twilight Princess, when you put the sword in the pedestal, the stairway 
uh, wait, is it the stairway? Yeah. But the first one, the door is open, right? And then in the second yeah. pedestal, the stairway You gotta go through the up. door. And then and it takes it, you into the, like, back in time. Yeah. The built, the not destroyed temple of time. Yeah. And Ocarina yeah. of Time does the same thing. When you put the sword in or pick it up, you go back and forth through time. So I was thinking, oh, they could just do that in Breath of the Wild. Like, all of a sudden there's a, a pedestal in the Temple of Time. Then you go and you put the sword in, and all of a sudden, the, uh, the almost said Spirit Temple. The Temple of Time is, like, reconstructed. It looks great. You walk out, and all of a sudden you're in the past 100 years. So I thought that would be a great way for them to do that. Uh, but since we're already talking about ideas that we want for Breath of the Wild 2... Uh, Josh, what's a, a major thing that you would like for Breath of the Wild 2? We'll go through and do two each, since I already have done one. Uh, you can go, Josh. Hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.